Welcome everyone to today's video. Look what Lenovo sent us over for three weeks to test with no strings attached as usual. An AMD ThinkPad 485. The moment I and maybe many of you have waited months or years has finally come true. An AMD based ThinkPad. So last year Lenovo already had some AMD based ThinkPad but they were based on the older non-Zen silicon. And this is higher performance AMD Ryzen based. So the case and chassis and such are similar to what we are used from IBM ThinkPens. Of course, they change it slightly every year. 14 inch matte display, 1080p with touch option available. I don't think they have 4K though. Port wise, we have two times USB C with power delivery. And here's some special docking station connector thing. This is a um, smart card slot. Need to double check later. And headphone jack, regular type A, USB, HDMI 2. So we have 4K at 60 Hz support and regular Ethernet connection for trouble free direct wired network connection as well as an SD card slot. So that I start to enjoy more and more for YouTube video and the Kensington lock thing. And the battery, these are two batteries. One is built in here in the front that I would guess you can use a service in case needed. As well as here the battery that is user swappable on the go. And the built in battery actually allows to swap this while your machine is running still on the built in battery. As I said, design wise, what we are used from ThinkPads, the regular black chassis and keyboard with touchpad and track point that we like so much. And next, let's power it up and see how it actually runs. First impression, as solid as I would expect from a ThinkPad. So let me grab my external SSD and start my portable full disk encrypted Linux installation to give it a thorough professional look and see how that is going. And the usual glowing ThinkPad LED there. Some more things like this always happen when I use Windows, so somehow it doesn't lock in me right now here, nothing really happens and it's downloading here quite some megabit over the Wi-Fi. So I would guess that is the usual update process. Hmm. Whatever exchange optimization is or anyway, of course not Lenovo's fault, just the regular Windows hiccups. So whatever gets us into the BIOS. Oh, another reboot and Windows allows us to use the PC again. So then let's try to use this advanced settings here to boot into the BIOS. I hope they did not totally disable the BIOS here on this Ryzen Pro security enhanced BIOS nonsense fluff. What is here what anyway? I rather prefer an old fashioned BIOS than this fancy stuff. Nobody knows what it is doing. Yes, eins enter. By setup utility, we did this already plenty of times. So finally the BIOS. So UEFI belt controller. Now you know some Lenovo test serials, AMD Ryzen, Vega mobile graphics. So this is 8 gig RAM. Of course, I personally would use more. Oh, this has HDMI 2. That is, of course, good for 4K at 60 Hz. 
Where is uh, what do we get here? Password, fingerprint, security chip, TPM, memory protection, virtualization. I also wonder why do they often have virtualization disabled by default? Compute trace for anti theft. Wonder how is it? Oh, the keyboard was already disabled. Why? Did it then not allow, or maybe boot quick? Diagnostic splash screen does not display unless you press escape during boot. Ah, oh, escape, but I also pressed escape. Okay, whatever. And F12, as usual, is the boot order list. So let's boot here this. Shift plus one, plus and minus. Yeah, plus and minus when you have a German layout. Okay, there was a plus. Um, whatever, so this external T3 first. And let's save this. Maybe you also disable quick boot. I usually like to see some diagnostics. Where was it even in... Over here. Exit saving changes. Let's see how that is going. To interrupt normal startup, press enter. PC beeper speed is a bit loud, so okay. So, okay, choose, choose temporary boot device. Okay, this looks how I expected it. So, let's see. Of course, as usual, my editing for a new kernel still need to build 4.18. We can do this in a moment to test the CPU performance. This errors only other mixer devices, and as usual. With our lovely Linux, it just works as we expected it. Ethernet and wireless work, so why do we have two Ethernet devices? Hmm, whatever. So then I would say, let's test Vulkan. So Vulkan just works, as expected with new enough kernel and Mesa and such, 600 frames. CPU load in this demo is minimal. As you can see, it is of course the beauty of Linux. I will also need to compile a new yeah, 1200 frames with next to zero CPU load. I or next will also need to compile latest Mesa and such. There are some new updates coming. The real test is of course thermal throttling. Is this touch by the way? Or maybe this is an entry-level model without touch, so but as you can see Vulcan demos here always looking really nice. And you see I just plug in here my not even Ubuntu, Fedora, Suzy, Debian or whatsoever, just my old-fashioned T2, keep it stupid simple stuff, and everything just works, boots, no problems whatsoever. Yeah, everything runs here with 160 frames with this demos. Need to compare what this idea pad was running. And this is not even the latest version. 700 frames. That is of course pretty nice. Seven hundred frames. Of course why not? Not sure if that looks right though. This is a nice looking demo and this is also running with 1600 frames. But again, this is GPU limited. So let's compile the latest Linux kernel. Heat wise, it became already warm, but we saturated the GPU load there. Not sure what's up with this two Ethernet though. Actually, they appear to be two Ethernet controller. Or maybe one is a docking station connection thing. That is funny. Yeah, that one works, whatever that is about. 
Let's also test the audio quality while at it. As you know, most of the laptops I tested had a misconfigured ReadHack audio codec with Linux Ultra drivers. So let's quickly check if this one is also affected and if we patch the kernel instantly for that. It's actually yet another audio codec. As you can see, ReadHack ALC257. Let's see what that is doing by default. Actually, this one sounds okay. So far so good, as you have heard in my earlier videos. I'm, although I never had a ThinkPad, I quite like the black design. And case and such also, as I mentioned multiple times, these aluminum machines like the Macs often give me some electric fizz and fizzling. And uh, as obviously aluminum is electricity conducting, so in Germany not so much, but often when I travel elsewhere, I get some feels like the case is under electricity a little bit. Probably someday I need to take a multimeter or oscilloscope with me and measure where that is coming from. So far the only strange thing is the second Ethernet that probably for sure is a docking station thing there or something like that. Of course when you load it it becomes warmer. So far it's the bottom and side there a little bit. But that's to be expected all laptops get warm when you fully load them. So Actually, I could have run here my tool with sensors. The clock speed, so unlike the idea pad, maybe the, as far as I remember, the idea pad may have already thermal throttled at this point. So this is different from the idea pad under full load. Oh, wait a second, I run here only with four jobs. It comes from using lesser devices like Microsoft Surfaces. And Tempfs, not to be I/O bound here on the SSD and save some write cycles. So let's build it again. So now the actual build started. It was a little bit serialized configuration and such. Now the full load starts and. We get full load here and we get more than 1.6 gigahertz. The idea pad throttled rather quickly and stayed at 1.6 gigahertz as far as I remember. And here right now we get still quite a lot more. 2.6 and such, 2.5. Let's see how long that continues and of course the fan starts a little bit. But I rather have fans running than performance limited. I also this summer, just some weeks ago, noticed that my some years old Retina MacBook Pro actually thermal throttles already just by charging in this global warming temperatures with 30 plus degrees centigrade in the room, as we often don't have so much air conditioning and such in Germany. And the MacBook Pro really throttles without any load just by charging because uh, Charging warms up the VRMs and such, and PCB and battery, so that without any load, just the UI just scrolling and clicking and waiting for things to load becomes a nightmare. That is, of course, really crazy. So, MacBooks are definitely not made for global warming. So, we are still running there with 2.5 and such, 2.6. So, this is definitely way more than we got on the idea pad. Let's see if we get twice the performance or something like that. I hope you learned something and enjoyed the unboxing and first look of this Lenovo IdeaPad A485. Don't forget to share, like and subscribe if you have. And I hope to see you soon for the next videos to come. So I guess this is a thermal throttling. It stays here at 2.3 GHz across the board. This, I guess, is fans running at the maximum speed of 3500. And the K10 temperature, which may not be accurate, as you know, maybe there is an offset of 10 or something, but that shows 73. But that is, of course, much more than the idea pad, which I think stayed at 1600 or something like that. And that is 2.3 of 1.6, I guess. That would be over 40% faster than an idea pad. And let's wait for the final time of the kernel compile. The air is relatively warm though. 
but again we now have here 100% load of software compilation what people would only do if they compile software do 3D stuff, gaming, video editing, you name it and here yeah, then things get warm yeah, there are two batteries, Linux shows both Kernel finally ready and we come in at 38 minutes. I need to check with the IDPad video, but at least compared to the Ryzen Mini ITX build, that is 3.8 times as much as that one only took 10 to 11 minutes. And here we are at 38. So there you see how much of a screamer the AMD Ryzen Mini ITX build is, but of course that consumes way more power, some 65 watts, something like that. We can check for a second what we get battery wise. So let's unplug here the power. So we consume 8.2 watts here being idle, waiting around. However, this is external display attached. So that currently without further optimizations would be a battery life of Actually now the discharge rate increased quite a bit for whatever reasons. Anyway, what is it? X server is actually my CPU graph and such widget is not the most performance efficient. Let's kill that. Of course it would be interesting to see where we get with first optimizations. But so far let's update this once more. Hmm, 13 watts. Don't really think that should be accurate though. Maybe it's just updating slowly. Actually, fence shows zero now. That would mean... Yeah, actually it's silent. That is cool. Maybe I just switch off here the HDMI. I sure hope we are more in the range of 8 watts or what it was earlier of 5 hours. 3 hours 30 would of course be a little bit short. But we will see what the kernel update brings in further optimization 